my goal here with Coagula is I wanted to build a neon sign uh, outside, but there was a bit of, it was a bit cost prohibitive, all things considered. So I thought if I did the Coca-Cola lettering that I would get sued by Coca-Cola and, and they would settle by building me a neon sign. So that's pretty much my strategy. about being in Chinatown is that you know I've sat here for a month now watching the activity and people who write about art make the rounds they see the shows here so it'll be nice to be on the circuit so to speak I've stated my opinion about art the art world and the people in it for two decades and a lot of people hold grudges a lot of people have memories There's a lot of cowards who would ignore what I do out of not wanting to upset people in the art world hierarchy that I may have rattled. When you're in the art world as long as I am, people just finally get used to you. It's like, oh, this guy's going to be around a while. Even people I've written really nasty things about, given bad reviews to, they know what I'm up to and they, they accept it. So that's, that was actually, the longer I was in the art world, that was one of the best things I ever learned. Politics, there are no permanent friends and there are no permanent enemies. There are only permanent interests. So in the art world, when they realize you can be around a long time, it's like, you know, they put you in your box, like, okay, this guy's like that. And then they try to work with it if they have to. That's actually been a bit pleasant because there was a time where I just, I couldn't go to half the galleries in town. It was kind of, whoops. There was no doubt in my mind who to have for the first show. This artist, he does art that is as conceptually rigorous and as dexterously composed, but as completely out there, confrontational, bit of a shock, but also epic, epic, layered meaning in this work. Uh, and yet, just great, great painting, great drawing. It's just, it's, uh, I had to have Tim you. Tim? This is Tim. Thank you. One of my favorite artists in LA today. Here I am. I curated a, a show, Tell Art, from 80, like 88 artists. And uh, Tim's piece just completely stole the show. It was just a, uh, it was called Vibrating Super Cunt. And it just, it, it just showed me the power of absolutely confronting people with just the most basic animal human impulse uh, manifests as just great, fine art. So a man called me up and he said, hey, you know, I'm going to take the plunge, I'm going to get a gallery. Um, you know, Matt and I talk a lot and I know for years he's been thinking about it, thinking about the next stage in the development of Coagula. And I think when he sprung the news on me that he was going to get a gallery, I, I thought, yeah, that makes sense. And then when he said he wanted to put me in the show, I, I thought, wow, that's awesome. Five and a half. Tim's work is just edgy enough. There are many takes on it. If you hate it, 
for out of some feeling of uh, you know predatory sexuality and, and the, the the debasement of the female body and, the, and actually the debasement of the male mind even. Simultaneous with that, you could look at it as a feminist show and the triumph and the, and, the, and the actual goddess power that women have with what nature gave them, just how completely humbled most men are by that. years ago, I called him the toilet scrubbing property manager, and his lawyer wrote me a letter saying, Wayne Blank is not a toilet scrubber, so I couldn't do Bergamot Station by any stretch of the imagination. So I went to Culver City, and there's a couple big name galleries there, and then there's a bunch of tiny landlords who inherited property from their parents, and they think they're going to make the big score off the other big name galleries. There's no other big name galleries coming, it's all other people trying to interlock onto the action of these big galleries. Now the best thing about Chinatown was it's very close to where I live, downtown LA, and so Chinatown was a no-brainer. Uh, the Box Gallery was in this space, and they moved out, they bought their own building, so this was the perfect space for Chinatown. Duh! I'm Matt Gleason, I'm on his show. Good luck, Matt! Happy, many happy returns! I want people to know that the program here is based on curating great shows. Art sales will come when great shows are curated. This is not a gallery where you have, oh, a picture here, nice picture here, nice picture there, oh, this one's this much, this one's that much. This is when you walk in and say, wow, this is an art show. This is an artist's mind manifest in objects here, experientially. You know, I don't want people to come out and stress about, oh, I can't afford this art. I want them to come out and see a great show. I'm competing with Art Studio. This is great experience where you just, you, you come out with, possessed by the spirit of the artist. I, I really want that. I want the artist to feel like, like they left themselves here. I don't want it to be like, oh, and then the next painting costs $400, and the next one's four dollars I don't want that shit at all. So, you know what I mean? You only get one opening, right? So you just gotta like, you know, you always remember when the, when you go to the, if your first baseball game, whoever hits a home run, you're going to remember that. So this is like, you know, when people walk in, it's like, oh, Coagula, they already know, they have a good name brand in the art world, maybe a bad name brand some people. When you when you walk in to Coagula Curatorial and you, you see Tim's art, it's going to be like, whoa. You know, this is like, I have to keep the brand consistent and we're, we're pretty much a radical brand. <laughs> 